The Sphinx is one of the secret characters and quest lines in Dragon's Dogma 2. If done correctly, you can get a lot of really great rewards. And the best thing about this is you can do this at the beginning of the game. And I highly, highly recommend doing so. There's a few reasons for this, but today I'm going to be showing you exactly what you need to know to find the Sphinx at the beginning of the game. And then I'll be showing you how to solve all the riddles just in case you're stuck. Now you do want to be careful with this quest line because if you do something incorrectly, there's a chance that you will lock yourself out of complete any of the other riddles. Now I am showing footage of fighting the Sphinx, but to 100% this quest line and get all of the rewards, you can even do it at level 1 because you don't necessarily have to fight the Sphinx. Now with all that in mind, let's get into where you're going to be able to find the Sphinx and how to get there. The quickest way to be able to get to the Sphinx is to go to the city of Vernworth, and you are going to go to the West of Vernworth Oxcart Station. If the Oxcart isn't here, you can go to this bell and you can wait for it to arrive, and then you can pay the Oxcart driver 200 gold to take you to to the checkpoint rest town. Now if you don't want to take the ox cart or have never been to the checkpoint rest town, you can exit out of the northwest corner of Vernworth, and you can follow this road along this path. You'll then need to go up north and follow this road here, and cross this bridge across the river. Then you're going to make your way all the way down through these winding roads, and eventually you'll land in the checkpoint rest town. Now you don't need to actually go into the town. Instead of going to the town, you're going to turn around, and you're going to head down this road. It's a bit of a run to be able to get to the Sphinx. You're going to notice that there's a gap in the cliffside here. You don't want to follow the road around this corner. Corner, you're going to actually go down this slope here. There are quite a few enemies along this path, but you actually don't need to fight anything along here, especially if you're doing it at the beginning of the game. So you can just run past any enemies and you're going to make your way all the way down to the bottom of this path. Try not to get hit by any of these rocks, so pay attention to what is behind you, because they can completely destroy your entire life. So just be cognizant of the rolling balls of death, and make your way to the very bottom. At the bottom of this hill is going to be a campsite. You can rest here if you want. Also in this woods, you'll be able to find a golden trove beetle, which I recommend picking up. If you do pick up that golden trove beetle, I recommend not using it either. Save it for later. If this is your first time in this area, there's going to be a dragon and a Cyclops fighting down in this battlefield. You don't want to go down there. You can fight them if you so desire. But where we want to go is actually along this cliffside. So you're going to make your way along this cliffside, trying to make sure not to fall off and don't let your pawns fall off either. And you're going to make your way inside of this castle. Once inside, you can fight anything in here, or you can just make your way around without having to engage with anything. And you're going to run up these stairs. You're going to find a ladder at the top. We're going to use this ladder to get to the top. And then we are going to run across this little grassy knoll here. And if we jump over this, we're going to have a little hole that we can go down to with another ladder. You're going to climb down this ladder. There's going to be more things that you can fight down here as well. But we're not going to worry about that. And we're going to continue down this little corridor right here. You can activate your lantern if you need to. And we're going to follow these stairs up and out of this area. At the end of this hallway is going to be another staircase that we need to climb up with yet another ladder to climb to the top of this area. Now from here we're going to exit out of this and if we go around this corner there is going to be another sleeping cyclops here. I've already defeated it but if you get here for the first time there's going to be a chest on the other side and a sleeping cyclops right here. What you're going to need to do is run up this ladder. You can completely avoid that fight if you so desire. And you're going to turn right, you're going to jump across this, and head into this cave. This cave is pretty straightforward. There is going to be quite a few enemies in here, but you can sprint past all of them. You're going to turn right, and then you're going to turn right again. You're going to run through this area. When you get to the fork in the road, you're going to turn right again, and you'll be able to get to the exit right here. Now that you've made it out of the cave, there is going to be some golems here, but you can just run around the left side. And you'll notice that we're starting to see murals of the Sphinx. So what we need to do is just continue around the side here. Avoid the golems if you so desire. And now we have finally almost made it to the Sphinx. You're going to run through this tunnel. And once you exit to the other side, you're going to want to turn right and you're going to start climbing up the staircase. At the top of the staircase is going to be the Sphinx that you're looking for. And if we open up our map, we can see it's called the Mountain Shrine. This is northeast of the checkpoint rest town, and this is the path that we took to be able to get here. Now from this point on, we are going to continue engaging with the Sphinx, checking out the riddles, and providing you with the solutions. So we've got a whole bunch of different riddles here. Let's do the riddle of eyes first. Our eyes are our allies, yet oft do they betray, for eyes tell lies. So I advise, and thence do need astray. Yet, how will your eyes advise you? 
Venture through yonder door and retrieve that which is of greatest value. Let's go through this door here. Let's take care of these hobgoblin or these little goblin boys first. So you don't actually need to go deep into this cave. If you turn around, you can see a little chest just above the door. And this is actually what we need to solve this first riddle. Inside of this chest is going to be a ceiling file. You very, very much need to save this file as well. Uh, but once you collect that, you can just go ahead and exit back out. And we can talk to the Sphinx and we will complete the first riddle this way. All right, so we got to give her the ceiling file, but we actually will get it back. So we're going to deliver this. Now, you definitely need to save this file. There's a couple different ways you can use it to be able to complete the Sphinx's riddles. But there is one specific scenario where it is going to be the most useful. Yeah, let's hear the riddle of madness. Love is as twin to madness, they say. They are bound fast as night is today. So bring forth your most beloved to me, that I might gauge the depth of your insanity. So she's asking us to bring our most beloved to her. Now, we do have a bunch of these pawns out here, and they are our closest friends. So let's actually have them follow us. <laughs> We're going to carry Karen there. I think Karen's our most beloved. So let's see if we can do the Riddle of Madness. I believe if you bring any of your pawns to this location, it should work. So we're going to answer is this. Is this your most beloved you bring before me? Yeah, her name is Karen and she is amazing. A promise kept. And so I shall open for you a chest. Uh, so let's see what we get in our second chest here. Ah, uh, we got a port crystal. These things are absolutely amazing. So a port crystal is something that we can actually place in the world and we can teleport back to it whenever we want using a fairy stone. It's basically a fast travel point that we can bring with us anywhere. You can get a couple of these throughout the game. Uh, this one is going to come in very, very handy later on. So make sure to keep it on you. You can keep it here at the Sphinx if you want as well. So what we're going to do is I know we're going to need to come back to the Sphinx because we got to go out and do a couple of different things here. Uh, so for right now, I'm going to use this port crystal. I don't think I can put it in the shrine, but I'm pretty sure I can put it right down here. So now we can teleport back to this using a fairy stone at any point in time. And we can pick this up and put it anywhere else in the world as well. So we've got a very quick way to get back to the Sphinx, which is important both for right now and in the future. We've got the Riddle of Wisdom. The parent knows the child, yet the reverse is far from true. The child knows not the parent, such is the parent's due. I am a lost child, for kinship do I yearn. So bring to me my parent, that I might better learn. Now it sounds a little crazy to bring the Sphinx's parent to it, but that's exactly what we gotta do. To do this, you actually need to recruit a pawn called Sphinx Parent. Special pawns can be recruited at Riftstones of Fellowship, and there is actually one just outside of the Checkpoint Rest Town. If you follow this road along here, you can go to the Riftstone of Fellowship. So before you go down this little mountain here to head to the Sphinx, what you need to do is actually continue your way just up this area here, Take out any particular monsters along this little path here. There might be some bandits around this area here. And inside of this broken down tower right here, if you go just inside of this, there's going to be a rift stone here. This is a special rift stone. There are multiple named rift stones around the map. And if we open up this rift stone, we can check the pawns in rift. We have the Sphinx mother here. We have the Sphinx parent, and we have the Sphinx father. Now the father and mother does not work, but the parent does. Now, unfortunately, this parent is quite a bit higher level than us, which means it's going to take a lot of RC for us to recruit it. We can add a marker to this and we'll be able to find it within this rift. And what we need to do is actually recruit this Sphinx parent. All right, so let's find this Sphinx parent here. And we're going to pick this up and we're going to bring it to the Sphinx. So we're going to walk right up to the Sphinx. We're going to place it down on this little altar here. And we are going to complete the Riddle of Wisdom. So in the third chest, let's see what we got. We've acquired 1,200 RC. So thankfully, we got paid back with all, well, even more RC than we spent on the parent. The Riddle of Conviction. Life is an enigma. A lender of mortal debt, yet lighter pack makes fleet of foot and challenge nimbly met. 
Now the keywords there is a lighter pack makes fleeter foot. And we know that the golden beetles allow us to carry more or to have a higher maximum encumbrance. So grant to me what you most prize and thence elude your ponderous demise. Well, we ain't dying anywhere. So if you picked up one of those golden beetles, you just need one of these golden trove beetles. And thankfully the Sphinx will actually give it back to us. All right, so let's open the Riddle of Conviction chest. And inside of this chest, we get a golden trove beetle. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate that you give a golden trove beetle and you get one back in the chest. In the Riddle of Rumination. It's ever the first we keep fond in our breast and ever the first that eclipses the rest. You know of the Seeker's tokens, I trust. Those keepsakes of a fondly remembered journey. Yet where was it that you found your first? Retrace your steps if you can. You might make a new discovery. Seven days, shall we say, ere you return? May your journey be a pleasant one. Now this is really important. We only have seven days to find where we got our first Seeker's token. Now I'm hoping, like me, many of you found the first Seeker's token at the beginning of the game. Otherwise, if you don't actually remember you got your first Seeker's token, your Sphinx quest might end here. And that's why I really recommend doing this as early as you can in the game. Thankfully, I do remember where my first Seeker's token was, which was just outside of Melv. But I highly recommend if you're getting into the game to be able to play, make note of where you pick up your first Seeker's token. It is going to save your life with the Sphinx quest, because if you don't know where it is, you actually can't complete the quest. So what I'm hoping a lot of people did when they were starting the game is that they were actively exploring the area. So there's a solid chance the first Seeker's token many people may have found would be just outside of Melv. We cross the bridge here, and along the side of the road, you can actually run down this area right here. This is actually where I picked up my first Seeker's token. So this should be where I can find the the item in the riddle that the Sphinx is asking for. Now at the bottom of this, instead of being a Seeker's token, when we pick this up, it is a Finder's token. So you'll know that you acquired the right one when you get a Finder's token instead of a Seeker's token. So now we need to bring this back to the Sphinx to be able to complete this part of the riddle. All right, so the Sphinx is actually going to leave now, taking the golden chest there. So you could actually fight her and get the golden chest at the beginning without opening up any of these side ones. But we got three fairy stones on that last chest, which is actually going to come in extremely handy here at the end. So now we need to find the next Sphinx location. What we need to do now is make sure to pick up this port crystal that we dropped down because we can reuse this somewhere else. Once you pick up your port crystal, if you placed one here, we need to find the second location to solve the next five riddles of the Sphinx. To do this, you're gonna head back to the checkpoint rest town. From the checkpoint rest town, you're going to go across the bridge. You're gonna follow this road down to the river and you're gonna follow this river's edge under the bridge and you're gonna end up seeing this path right here. You're gonna follow this path up the mountain. As you progress through here, you can run into a Minotaur, Cyclops, and I believe even chances of a Griffin. You can run past these or fight them. You're going to continue following this road until you can turn left, which is going to lead you down a path to the next Sphinx location called the Frontier Shrine. So now at this point in time, there isn't a set way that we can do uh, the riddles that she offers. It's going to be a random five riddles, and we need to figure them out as we go. Now, technically, coming here is a riddle in and of itself. So we can actually go and open the first chest here. So that's something to keep in mind for future riddles. Let's open this bad boy up. We got 104,999 gold. So let's see what she offers us for the first riddle. Now, questions beget questions. And I have one for you. How many riddles have you solved thus far? The memory fails me, you see. Remind me and make it plain. So she's asking us how many riddles we solved thus far. At the first location, we solved five. Coming and finding her here was actually a riddle in and of itself. So we have solved six riddles so far. So what we need to do is we need to bring these over. Now, the way you can figure this out is you obviously have completed five at the previous area. And depending on when she gives you this riddle, you can tell by how many chests you have opened already. If there's one chest opened, that means we have solved six two, seven, etc., etc. 
So we need to bring six of these little statues over. And once we bring them in front of her, we can complete this riddle. All right, now that we've brought six of these over, we can talk to her once again. It's so nice that you can complete these at the beginning of the game because it gives you a nice little boost. The unmaking arrow. Do not use this. So vast is this world and full of life. You are but one of many. Indeed. In the grand scheme, we are as distinct from one another as pebbles on a beach. Yet we do so love to extol our differences. But are these differences so great? Hmm. If you believe so, this next task should prove exceedingly simple. I seek this man. If men are so distinct, I'm sure you'll find- Oh, not this dude. I've been wondering what this dude is all about for a very long time. So we got the riddle of a differentiation. Anyways, there's an NPC called Dante. And if you've played any other Capcom games, then you know that Devil May Cry has a character named Dante. Dante actually lives in the checkpoint rest town, but this isn't actually the character that we are looking for. We're looking for a character very similar to Dante, which we need to get on the other side of this gate. Now, if you're doing this at the beginning of the game, you can actually sneak into this second area before you would typically be able to in the main story quest, which means we need to sneak into the second area. Now, thankfully, since we've already found this Sphinx Shrine, we can do that. Earlier in this Sphinx quest line, you can either get a port crystal or a part crystal. So we're going to use this and we're going to put this right here. This is going to make this Sphinx quest line so unbelievably easy. So make sure to place one before we leave because you're going to be able to finish this Sphinx quest line super quick because of this. So now once you've placed your port crystal here, you're going to follow the road up and you're going to follow this pathway all the way down into Batal. Once you get to around here, there's actually a waterfall that you need to follow the path along the waterfall. There's a chance you're going to encounter a dragon down here, as well as potentially a griffin. You're going to want to avoid both of these and just follow this road as quick and efficiently as possible. You can either make your way up the cliffs right here or follow the road to this main road where you're then going to follow it all the way north to the south checkpoint town, which is right here. If you've gone far enough in the main story, you can go to the checkpoint rest town and you can just pass through this gate and immediately you can immediately be where you need to be to complete this riddle. Otherwise, you're going to have to go the long way around. What we're looking for is this fine gentleman right here. This is Virgil. Virgil has a brother named Dante and they look exactly the same. They are twins. You cannot use Dante for this, so you will need to use Virgil. I had an epiphany this morning and I was like, I wonder if I can actually do this. And as long as you pick up an NPC, if you go into your inventory, you can use a fairy stone and you can teleport with something that you are carrying. This makes life so unbelievably easy. So we're going to teleport to the Frontier Shrine port crystal that we placed with Virgil on our back squirming. And this means we don't actually have to kill him, which is nice. And when we teleport, we will have Virgil with us. So now we just need to run up to the Sphinx. I like that he kind of just walks up to the Sphinx like he knows exactly what's going on. We got the Whimsical Daydream. Now, this is a weapon that you need for using the trickster. So, so we got two more riddles that we need to solve, and then we need to open that golden chest as well. Let's see what our next riddle is going to be. So he shall be your opponent, not I. Okay. <laughs> However, I am not one to be amused by a simple duel. This ring into battle, that I might gauge your true strength. Now, if we go to fight this, we're actually going to take a lot of damage. And you'll notice that we don't deal any damage at all. So what we need to do here is you need to perform some kind of move that is going to knock the enemy down. There you go. And what we can do is actually just pick up this enemy. You do not want to try and fight this thing forever. It's it's going to, you, you literally can't. What you need to do is you need to run to the edge and you just delete us this bad boy. Uh, bye bye and riddle complete. The ring of ambition is what we get as a reward, which a ring bearing a mysterious power that invigors the spirit, slightly boosts experience gained from defeating foes. This is going to be very good if you want to level multiple vocations. And I'm actually going to equip this. Do not leave the ring of derision equipped. It will stay equipped. All right, now for the final and most difficult riddle. Until I discovered the trick for teleporting, this was an absolute nightmare, and if you fail this, things are going to go horribly awry. There's two different ways that you can complete this riddle, and it is very important that you do one of them. The crazy part of this is before we fight the Sphinx, we need to take this vase to our particular person. 
The first time I did this, I actually carried this thing all the way through here. And we need to take it all. We need to take it through the most dangerous area of the game to a particular NPC. But we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to bring the NPC to the vase instead, because it's going to be so much easier. If you have never been to Back Batal, this is actually where we need to go to complete this final riddle. From the Sphinx Shrine, you can navigate down this road, you can make your way back down this waterfall, and navigate through this main road. This main road will split off here after crossing this bridge. You can go across this tiny little road here, navigate across these rocks, back onto the main road, and make your way up to Back Batal. Now that we're in Back Batal, there's a few things that we want to do to really be able to complete the last two riddles. The first thing you want to do is go to the Vocation Guild. If you enter through the main corridor, you can turn right and the Vocation Guild is right here up on the upper level. And what we want to do here is to change our vocation. You're going to want to equip Archer. It can be level 1, it doesn't matter, and it doesn't really matter the type of equipment that you have as long as you do have a bow. If this is your first time unlocking the Archer, you will get all of the equipment necessary to be able to use the Archer right off the bat. Otherwise, make sure to just equip a little bit of armor and one bow. It doesn't really matter the level of any of this. After switching your vocation to Archer, you're going to want to make sure that you have a certain item in your inventory. You remember one of the rewards that we got from the Sphinx Riddles is the Unmaking Arrow. Make sure you have this in your inventory. Make sure you have a bow equipped. And then we're going to head up to the Mural Byway. To do this, you want to run down this road, turn left here, and then run up these stairs to the Mural Byway. If this is your first time up here, you're going to encounter this person right here, Moritz, which is going to talk about the Sphinx mural behind him. Now there's a couple different ways you can deal with this. One of the other rewards that we did get from the Sphinx was the ceiling file. This allows you to actually absorb NPCs in the game into this file. It is a one-time use, and we could use this to take Moritz over to the Sphinx. But what we're going to do instead is grab Moritz, and we're going to run outside of this area because we need to use a fairy stone. We can't do it undercover. We're just going to run down to this little area right here. We're going to go into our inventory and we're going to use the fairy stone to return to the port crystal that we placed at the Sphinx Shrine. Just like Virgil, Moritz will come with us. And this makes it so much easier because otherwise you would have to actually take this very fragile pot from the Sphinx and carry it all the way to Back Batal. And there's a very solid chance that it will break, meaning you won't be able to finish this quest line. So instead of going through that nightmare, we are going to bring Moritz to the pot. If we drop Moritz here, there's going to be a little bit of dialogue, which will discuss the vase and how surprised he is to be here. You'd think he'd really focus on the Sphinx, but regardless, this will solve this riddle. Now, there is a couple different things that you can do from here. The second you talk to the Phoenix after dropping Moritz, you're going to enter the end of this quest line, and you have a choice. You're going to obviously unlock your final chest there, but the Sphinx is going to immediately leave after this. Now, if you want, you can fight the Sphinx, and you can go through the whole combat involved. But if you really want to do this the right way, there's one specific way to do it. And what I recommend doing if you want to experience fighting the Sphinx for yourself is before you come here with Moritz, while you're in Back Batal, go ahead and sleep at an inn to set yourself up with a new inn rest save. This will allow you to load from your last inn rest to be able to redo these parts if you so desire and want to experiment with fighting the Sphinx for yourself. Regardless, what we're going to do here after dropping Moritz off is we're going to approach the Sphinx, who's going to congratulate us on finishing the last riddle with her creepy little face. So now we unlocked the final chest, but we still have the golden chest left, which is technically the final riddle, which is the 11th riddle of all. Now there is only one way to be able to get this chest, and that is to truly defeat the Sphinx. Now what we need to do is go into our inventory, we need to equip the unmaking arrow, and we need to aim at the Sphinx and shoot her in the wing. This is the only way to defeat the Sphinx. Now, after a short dialogue, the Sphinx will disappear, dropping some gold and a key for you to be able to open up the final chest. Now, you can do that at the very end. If you decide to, you can fight the Sphinx and then shoot it with the arrow at the end. But if you're not maining Archer or other things, it could be pretty difficult. So it's really up to you how you want to finish this off. We're going to pick up our gold here. So we got 2,000 gold in that bag. We got the key of Sagacity. 
probably mispronounced that. And then we can open up the final chest. And inside of here is going to be an eternal wake stone. And we also obviously want to open up the chest that we got from Moritz. And inside of here is going to be the eternal bond. The eternal bond grants the wearer a more companionable air when offered as a gift that deepens the bond between giver and receiver. So you might want to save this for something specific later down the road. And we also got the eternal wake stone. This is a very important thing. A regular wake stone will revive one ally, whereas an eternal wake stone will restore any fallen ally within the vicinity of the holder to life. There are specific scenarios where the eternal wake stone can be incredibly handy. I don't want to spoil what that is because it can be a big surprise, but when it happens, you'll definitely know it's time to use the eternal wake stone. So completing this quest line right can be extremely handy. Now that is everything you need to know about the Sphinx and the Riddles. I really do hope you all enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.